imagine. Holy shit, it is hard to do ASMR. All right, speed ASMR, don't do it. You'll die. I don't know how people do speed ASMR. Actually, I guess they don't do it quickly. Maybe that's why. But yeah, if, if you, yeah, don't try it. Talking quickly while whispering, like, shits on your voice. You should do ASMR. It would have to be a really slow ASMR stream. Like, really slow ASMR. Because, I, yeah, it's, you can't go faster than it. Turn off the YouTube light. True. Aren't patch notes lacking? What do you mean? This is a juicy patch notes. In the past, we've had patch notes, and so, okay, last, wow, we're really stalling here. Uh, last patch notes, not last patch notes, last expansion, did we have patch notes? Were there a lot of, um, changes? Because I feel like most of the time when they release a new patch, there are not very many changes, right? I even talked about this a month ago. I said, uh, the reason we're not having patch notes a month ago, or patch changes a month ago, is because... Bal meta is pretty balanced and they're getting ready for the next expansion they don't want to change too much right and i say that and they're reworking like 10 cards or something it's crazy no i, I love these patches these patch notes all right let's do patch notes here we go uh multiplayer is now standard okay cool developer pets are now mentioned in credits that's kind of cool play menu has been redesigned to improve the understandability of the different game modes and bring it and brings with it numerous other new features and enhancements to the user experience. A description is shown for each game mode. The player's rank progression is shown with current progression of the ranks mosaic art. Current active... Okay, do any of these matter? Uh, granular breakdown of MMR statistics is shown for... Okay. Two new trees related to Master Mirror. Cool. New contracts for playing... All right, cool, cool, cool. Neutrals. Reset keyword is now removed. So the current cards that have the word reset on it are Mandrake... Spores. Oh no, sorry. Reset keyword? Wait, so what is it called now? Wait, I don't understand. What is it called now then? It's just gone? Okay. Uh, maybe they word it out. Like. Oh, maybe they just got rid of this. You guys can't see that. But there's a keyword over here that just says reset. Maybe reset is self-explanatory. So they just don't make... I don't understand why you would remove it. It doesn't hurt to have this here. Okay, whatever. It doesn't really matter, I guess. Maybe in the actual card they say restore a unit to its base power. Maybe they just do that. Deploy, re restore a unit to its base power. They just take it and stick it over. Varaxis has reset word. Reset and allied. Yeah, but it's not in bold. Reset and allied Northern Realms units order ability. Oh, okay. Okay, that's why. Okay. So yeah, what it'll say from now on is something like restore a unit to its base power instead of this. Okay, that makes sense. Because otherwise, if you have the word reset here... It wouldn't really work because... Oh, does it restart its base? Okay, I understand. That makes sense, I guess. Uh, new keyword disloyal. This card is played on the opponent's side of the battlefield. So this is for spying. New description for keyword spying. Status given to a unit spawn played or moved to the opposite side of the battlefield. Okay. Cards for spying are now disloyal. Cool. Since spying was both used to describe a st uh, status effect and distinguish between units that have to be played on a p player's or opponent's side of the board... Uh, we have added a new keyword, disloyal, so the distinction between the two is crystal clear. Disloyal is a keyword for units that have to be played on the opponent's side of the board. Spying is a status of units. <laughs> All right, cool. Biting Frost, provisions change from 7 to 5, ability change to spawn Frost on the enemy row for 3 turns. So, if you look at current weather, they're A for 7s, right? 8, 7, now it's going to be 6 for 5. Uh, 6 for 5 is typically better than 8 for 7. Um, the big impact for this is a card like Avalok, right? Because you're losing two points on all of these for Avalok, which is also why they buffed Avalok, which we'll get to in a sec. Yep. Uh, do you play this in any deck because of this change? Probably not. Uh, the only deck you consider is maybe a no unit deck for monsters because you want to play shit tons of Frost. Yep. Uh, Frost keyword at the start of... 
uh, owner's turn damage to highest unit. So fog and frost swap. Frost is now highest. Fog is now lowest. That's what these two are. Uh, fog key. Yep. Uh, so all of them are going three turns, seven to five. Rain keyword. Yep. Okay, cool. So they're doing this for all the weathers. Um, maybe the other reason is to make it less punishing for weather. Um, weather removal is getting removed from the game. So... But, I mean, even if weather removal didn't exist in the current game, it wouldn't change anything. So, yeah, I'm not too sure why they're doing this. Oh, is it for Aridin? Hold on, what's the what's the wording on Aridin? Is it spawn a frost, or is it spawn for X turn? I think it's spawn for X turns. Yeah, spawn frost for two turns. So, like, if this was, like, spawn a biting frost, then it would make sense. But it's not even that, so... I, I don't honestly know why they made this change. I guess it's just easier to include into a deck. So the big thing is, like, maybe they add Wild Hunt. You guys remember Wild Hunt Hounds back from the day where they were, like, bronze card, forest strength, pull a Biting Frost from your deck, right? If they added a card like that, then, yeah, obviously it makes sense. But that card doesn't exist, so... Yeah. Um, yep. Biting Frost, Fog, and Rain will now spawn the effect for three turns and cost five provisions. Frost will exchange its ability. Did they say why? No, they don't explain why they're changing it from seven to five. Okay, Dragon's Dream ability to... So Dragon's Dream didn't change. They just... It spawns Dragon's Dream, and then it has a keyword, which is exactly what it is. So same thing with Skellige Storm. Spawn Storm for two turns. Storm is damage the whole row. Uh, the reason you do this is so that in the future, when you create new cards, you can say, spawn Storm, and then you already have it. Right? You already have the keyword in the game. Ragnarug, on the other hand, is very different. Provision change from 12 to 10, so in case you don't know what Ragnarug does. It essentially is just two damage every turn for the rest of the round uh, for 12 provisions. Pretty shit card. Uh, doesn't see any play. It's all a little bit of play in a Lippy deck with uh, Sarah if you play it and go again. Pull it out with Mata and like play Lacerate and stuff like that. Uh, so now it's going from 12 to 10. Two provision buff. Ability change to spawn Cataclysm on the enemy row for four turns. Cataclysm keyword at the start of Onus turn. Split three damage randomly between units in the row. So this is very important. You might not realize this. So let's go look at Rain. Uh, rain. Damage two random enemy units, right? So if you play this, they need to have two units to be getting the value, right? If they only have one unit, you're only getting one value. This is just random units. You don't need three units on the row, meaning if your opponent plays a 12-point unit on the board and you play Cataclysm, you get three value. And then you get three more value, another three value, and another three value. You're getting 12 value out of this. So it's a 12 for 10 um there's no weather clear so it is strictly a 12 for 10 um yeah this is really good uh we're we're gonna get to crimson curse a little later on but weather monsters is gonna be really powerful uh i don't know i know yeah i know somebody was complaining that monsters or like no unit monsters wasn't getting any buffs this expansion but it's getting, like, too many buffs, honestly. I don't know. This is really good for monsters. Uh, we have Cataclysm, or Ragnarug buff. We have Crimson Curse buff. We have the new Frost uh, AG. We have Winter's Queen. There's so much support for No Unit Monsters this expansion. So I'm very much looking forward to playing No Unit Monsters. Uh, yeah, and this is obviously very scary in a Great Sword deck because... It's like a Skellige Storm and Rain on steroids, and you don't have to worry about them not having enough units. You can literally just dump this. Uh, Great Sword might actually play this card. Dagon is back? No. Cataclysm Spawn Ragnarug is now more powerful than other row effects. It deals three damage. Wait, so can Shoop spawn this? I know they reworked Shoop, and we'll get to it, so I, I, I guess we'll find out. Uh, still easily reach value over its provision given enough time. Yep, I mean, four turns, not that hard. Want a fun fact? Check out Novigrad's expansion patch notes. Look who we have here on the background. Oh, shit. It was a year ago. Do you know who this is, chat? Wow, a one-year leak. That's crazy. That's pretty cool. 
Um, clear skies for vision change. So they're removing all weather clear from the game. Binary uh, weather is gone. Not that it was too binary, just because nobody actually played weather removal. But yeah, that binary nature is gone. I'm excited for this. Not because of this, but more so I'm really hoping CDPR removes artifact removal from the game. Um, this might be like their initial test. Like do this, see what happens, see how people feel. Um, so yeah, maybe, but yeah. Uh, the, the other thing is for artifact removal, technically scenarios are actually getting buffed this patch simply because of the devotion keyword. If you want to play a devotion deck, it means no neutrals. If you have no neutrals, it means no artifact removal because all artifact removal is neutral. So you're gonna see more scenarios because of that. Hopefully uh, the big one is the monster one. The monster one is actually pretty good. So yeah. Um, yep. Clear skies provision change from four to five. Ability to change to boost all units in your row by one. Okay. Um, It's all right. I mean, I don't know, chat. You think this will see play? So it's comparable to Talisman, obviously. Talisman. But Talisman buffs the whole board. Um, right? If you're playing a deck that goes wide, I feel like you'd rather just commit and all in and play Talisman and not this. But maybe you play both? I mean, if you get nine units on a row and you play this, you're getting, you're getting nine for five? It's not bad. 18 for 7 sounds better, but, you know, it's not unplayable. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't think it'll see play. If this thing was 4 provisions, yeah, I think it would see play. Uh, actually, in a beast SK deck, maybe it's playable. You go pretty wide pretty quickly, and it's good discard fodder in short rounds. I mean, it's not great discard fodder. It's 5p, but, like, it, it's not terrible. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I would not be surprised if there's, like, one deck that plays this. But, yeah, it, it's pretty underwhelming, right? There's Golden Froth that's 6 for 4. This is 9 for 5, best case scenario. It's just, it's really hard to pull off. So, if this thing was 4 provisions, I think it could actually see some play. Uh, a little bit better value than Golden Froth sometimes. But, yeah, uh, probably won't see much play. Developer comment, uh, Clear Skies is now much better for your units morale. Boosting an entire row of them by 1. A pretty affordable provision price. I mean, yeah, I guess. Iris! Uh, this is a big change. So Iris currently is destroy a artifact or remove weather. Right? Unplayable garbage. Eight provisions. Now it is provision change from eight to seven. I'm assuming still five strength. Ability change to deploy given allied unit vitality four. Nine for seven. Yeah. That's not bad. I mean, nine for seven neutral. Better than a good chunk of neutrals. It's a worse Ida. Yeah, but... You know, it's a neutral card. It's not supposed to be better than an existing faction card. What is this garbage? It's not... Wait, hold on. I actually... What does Ida do? I know it gives vitality, but what are the actual stats? 5-4. This is actually... I didn't think of this. This is actually pretty good with a uh, new Hamadryad. It's like really good. Right, for 12 provisions, you're looking at 8, 9, 17 for 12. That's all right. Not terrible. Yeah, okay. Yeah, maybe you even play that. Um, so yeah, I mean, Iris is a playable card. Will you play it in your deck? Um, you better not be playing Devotion. Is it playable? I mean... <laughs> There are probably better cards at 7 provision that you could be including to your deck that has more synergies, but it's not that bad. It's, yeah, it's a good arena card. That's so boring, though. What do you want it to do? Give Vitality 4 damage an enemy unit by 4 and boost 2 units in your hand by 2? Like, shit, dude. <laughs> Developer comment. Oh my word. Stepping out of her niche of being the ultimate tech card. She was never the ultimate tech card. She was the ultimate shit card. She'll now provide a decent amount of value over time and be a neutral option to get vitality, which, as it turns out, is rather unique. Developer comments, row effect, clear as a mechanic. Okay, so it's two different ones. Has been removed, as all row effects have rather predictable value. Do not provide a lot of points on play, rather units. Yeah, 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 okay. Yep. 
All row effects have been additionally balanced in absence to straightforward counters. Okay, so that's this. They should have put this a little further up here, uh, explaining why they changed it from seven to five. But okay, that's fine. All black fire changed from three to four. So we talked about this a little earlier. Uh, because all of these are getting nerfed by two, they're buffing Avalok's power to four to compensate for it. So it's still technically a nerf to Avalok, right? Before he was getting 11 for 10, now he's getting 10 for 10, so... Yeah, honestly, I would have liked him to have gone to five, but maybe that's too good. Yeah, they, they keep nerfing, nerfing Avalok. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. Developer comment has received a minor buff. Yeah, but it's a nerf. I mean, yeah, this is a buff, but this is... Okay, whatever. It should have gone to five. Death? Scepter Storm? Yeah, I mean, same thing. So anything that works with weather, I uh, got buff. Buff. This will go to six provisions just because these got nerfed. Um, okay, I mean, cool. Whatever. Still garbage. Scout power change from four to five. Ability change to Veil. This is interesting. So Scout is now a 5-5 five, five Veil. Yay. Um Okay. I guess. I mean honestly they should Okay, if they had made it a six, it would still suck. I don't know. I, I don't whatever. I mean So the problem is if they actually no, even if they made it a six, would you play it? So if they had made it like a five and pushed it down to four provisions it would have been like decent inclusion in raid attacks um so yeah i don't know the only reason you would ever consider playing this card is if we're in like a super duper bleed slash uh poison meta and you want all your cards to have the word veil on them in which case you could include this because it has the word veil but uh yeah it's, it's, it's pretty shit um scout moves ahead fearing no statuses and leaving his old job of controlling weather behind okay <laughs> sure shoop mage row effect choices change to deploy spawn a random row effect on all rows for three turns okay before it was what four turns no before it was just spawn a weather So, my question is, is can you roll Crimson Curse on this? So yeah, you can SK Storm for three turns instead of two, which is much better. SK Storm was typically the worst one to hit. Um, Dragon Dream seems like the same. Ragnar would be nine damage, a little better, well a lot better actually. But can you hit Crimson Curse? I don't know. But yeah, hitting. Because if you hit Crimson Curse, you get the two extra twos, right? You get four extra points. Right? I think? Maybe. I don't know. I'd have to look at... Uh, yeah, on your rose. It's all rose. Just shoot mage. It's all board. No? Okay. Yeah, maybe that's a part of the deploy effect. Yep. Okay. Shoot punter row effect. Choice change to deploy spawn a random row effect on your enemy row for three turns. This is a pretty big nerf. Um, like, yeah, if you hit Cataclysm, it's good. But if you hit any of the other weathers, you're looking at 10 value instead of 12. Before you, like, if you hit Fog or Frost, you're looking at 8 plus the 4 body. Now you're looking at 6 plus the body. Going for Shoop Weather it really isn't an option anymore. So this is, this is a nerf, unfortunately. Shinmiri said the Shoop Mage Weather ability got first... Yeah, so... When they first showed us this, it was only enemy cards, or enemy rows, and it was broken. <laughs> and they're like, oops, we forgot to add both. <laughs> um, yep. Developer comment, Shoop will now summon in a random row effect for exactly three turns, which makes it better in some cases and worse in other, adding an extra layer to his variety. I mean, extra layer, aka just don't do it. Thaw ability, change the boost and ally unit by four and give a veil. Thaw is 4p, right? I mean, better than Scout. 
I don't know. It's not. It, it's pretty bad. I mean, you're you're getting four for four, which is pretty bad. I mean, we have a new packed card that's like six for four, right? Um. Once again, if you're building a deck where you just want to give veil to everything, I don't know. Maybe you're playing TK and it's kind of like a purify. You purify your own units if you're not playing Squirtle with this. So purify, semi purify. Fortune teller. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, it's whatever. If this was five, I think it would actually be pretty good. Uh, I mean, maybe within the next six months, this cease play at one point. Uh, if we're in a meta that's a lot of aggressive, uh, like offensive statuses, but most likely won't see any play. We're still on neutral card, dude. They rework so many cards. Thought keeps us boosting component instead of ending row effects. It becomes weaker. And becoming weaker as a result, it protects the unit with Veil. Okay. Oh, geared Poggers! Power change from 6 to 7. Wow. Still shit. Pog. Um, it's still 8 provisions. Should just made it an 8. Alright, while we're getting there. Um, still garbage. Ekmek, thank you for the 34 months. Welcome back, sir. Uh, I mean, I guess you could play it in, like, a pre-stack, but, yeah, it, it's pretty garbage, unfortunately. Should we zoom in? Is that better? That's probably better. Uh, yeah, I wish, I wish they would buff their provisions, or, yeah, to 7, or bring it to 8. You could potentially play it as a 7 for 7, 8 for 8, but, yeah, it's, it's anti-weather. Sure, I guess, yeah, if, yeah, okay, I, I suppose. Uh, if there's a lot of weather in the meta, you could play all geared. I, I guess. <laughs> um base power seven to match is a more all right uh morale ability to change to big big nerf here poison yeah uh order melee so we got the damien stefan nerf uh, i'm very happy about this morale is an insanely powerful card having it subject to uh row removal is pretty good in my opinion i think this is fine i don't think it kills the card I'm glad to see this change. Morale is a pretty insane card. I'm fine with this. Yeah, I mean, they, they still, like, Morale is still a nut card, right? If they play Morale, you can move their Morale and then they use their other poison. Like, Morale's power level is still there. I mean, in like 90% of cases, this actually isn't that relevant, to be honest. Because... If you remove it, it's the equivalent of doing 5 damage, and they still get to poison and kill your card with another card. So, like, with the exception of, like, Bruver, where you can Bruver and push your opponent's card and then purify, right? Like, this is a buff to Bruver, basically. <laughs> That's about it. Oh, um, so yeah, Bruver gets a teeny tiny bit better, I suppose. Because Bruver is, like, the one leader that can actually, like, make use of this. Or Melina. Yeah, that's true. Or Melina. If you have a Melina on the board, you can also do that. I actually think Bruver is going to be playable next patch. Uh, we haven't gotten to it, but Agalice went from 2 strength to 4 strength, which means you only need to put 6 boost on her for her to break even. Uh, with the new hand buff cards, the new Cuddlers, you can plus 2 on a uh, Dryad. I think Agalice might actually be playable, um, which means Bruver is also pretty good. So, yeah, maybe. We'll see. Uh, locking Morale's order to melee Robo gives players an additional way to deal with his ability to slay any unit. Yep, okay. I mean, he still kills anything, but... Regis' ability changes to deploy damage all units by one initiative. If any of them were destroyed, repeat this ability. Um, when they announce this, lots of Fs in chat for Regis. So, I know why they're doing this. It makes sense why they're doing it. Um... If you look at a card like Gigni or Scorch, both of those cards are potential massive swings. I mean, you can hit like 30, 40 point Gigni Scorches, right? Oh, excuse me. So giving the opponent the ability to play around these giant point swings makes sense. Same goes for Regis. Regis can easily get 30, 40 points on a row. Um, I've done this a lot. Now... Is Regis a good card right now? No. So they're nerfing a card that sees basically no play and essentially kills the card. Um, the only reason I can think of as to why this is justified is Spy Nilfgaard is going to be absolutely busted. Um, and so they were concerned with Spy Nilfgaard. That would be my guess. But if it's not even that strong in Spy Nilfgaard, I would have liked them to have buffed this by two. 
either give it plus two extra strength or remove two provisions off of it. So, yeah. I'm a little sad about this. It doesn't really affect anything, but for those of you who did play this card, rest in peace. Um, it makes sense. CDPR wants there to be counterplay on large swing cards, and that's completely understandable. I just think they also needed to buff it a little bit. So, whatever, I guess. A little unfortunate. Uh, yeah, matching Geralt, Gigni, Scorch, Explosive Potential. Yeah, basically exactly what I just said. Uh, just like Scorch and Gigni, it should slow down his ability to completely swing the game by forcing a play. It's holding on to him to choose between playing him with extra power or taking the time to set a big play. Yep. It's understandable. Just like Scorch. I mean, Scorch is unplayable garbage right now. They seriously need to buff the card. This needs to go down to 10p for it to see play. Um, will that ever happen? I don't know. All right. Armored's Workshop provision changed from 6 to 5. Um, this is kind of cool. So it looks like they are buffing neutrals. Boost three adjacent units by two and give them one armor. Um, so now you're looking at six for five. So it's a worth froth unless you can utilize the armor. Well, how do you utilize armor? Yeah, berserkers. So in the Gord deck that I've been playing right now, I play Monroe with berserkers, dwarf berserkers. You can buff them. Honestly, even in that deck, I still wouldn't play it, to be honest, just because it's gimmicky. I mean, that combo is already gimmicky. Also, that combo with the Monroe and Zoltan is going to get removed immediately for Ethne. So, yeah, uh, it's a nice buff, I guess, but I don't think it's really that relevant, to be honest. Xavier Lemons, power change from 5 to 6. I mean, we're getting there. It's still garbage, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, They just introduced the new squirrel. Oh, we're super big over here. Uh, they just introduced the new 4-4 Squirrel, which allows you to banish. The only reason this is better is because you can still hit three units, which is fine, I guess, if you're playing against, like, Bran. Sorry, not Bran. Um, what's it called? If you're playing against SK, Lippy Dex, um, are you going to play this? Honestly, probably not. If you want banish, just play the Squirrel. I still think this could honestly use another buff, but whatever. I mean, they're, they're getting there. They're getting there. Only took six months to buff them, but I still think it's bad, unfortunately. Music's a bit loud. Yeah, I just turned it down. Give it Veil. It wouldn't do anything. Crystal Skull boost from three to four. So another thing they're doing this expansion is they're buffing stratagems. Uh, Spiro's been complaining about this for a while now, uh, and he's right. Stratagems have started to get power crap. The five points that it's roughly worth isn't worth it anymore. Um, and that makes sense. So we're getting some nice buffs on stratagems. I believe the stratagems are getting buffed. I mean, we'll, we'll cover them, but it's Crystal Skull, this one, this one. This one's the biggest. I think this one might actually see play uh, with the change. But uh, yeah, so this is going to be boost a unit by four instead of three. Is that playable? Um... Sometimes you played it in Gurney because your round one was so strong. You didn't really need the five points. So, yeah, maybe in a Gurney deck. Um, in a boost Skoyatal, like a hand buff Skoyatal deck, this is a massive buff. Like, plus four is huge, right? I mean, we have this card, and this card is absolute shit, right? This, in terms of the deploy effect, is the same thing. And this is evaluated at, like, six provisions for this plus four. So on like a Skags or an Aglice, this is massive, right? Like four points, you get to double utilize this for eight. Woo! Wrong card, hello. Crystal Skull. Is it not this? Oh, I thought this was Crystal Skull. Oh, I'm sad. Oh, that's depressing. I thought it was this card. Now I'm sad. Is it this card? Oh, it's garbage. Feels bad, man. I don't give a shit about this card. No, you got my hopes up, CDPR. I thought Handball Square Tell would be playable. Oh, come on. Dang it. Nah, I mean, yeah, you're not going to play this. I mean, you could play it in Beast SK, but the new Ouroboros is better, so. Meh. Nah. I'm sad. Siphon Wily provision change from 9 to 8. I like this change. Um, Wily is actually pretty decent now. Yeah. It's an 8 for 8. You get the banish effect. Uh, I saw Shinmiri talking about this. He doesn't like it. Granted, he plays a lot of SK, so <laughs> it makes sense he doesn't like it because it counters SK more than any other faction, but SK's carryover. Things are pretty broken, so honestly, thank goodness. Um, 
yeah, 8 for 8, it's playable. If you're playing damage, it's even better. Obviously, it's easier to set up. Uh, I played this a bit in Northern Realms because you do have a good chunk of damage. Yeah, this, this is pretty playable now. Uh, we're noticing something. Uh, Ryan Godric actually talked about this the other day in my chat. Actually, he's been talking about it for a while. But basically, what if CDPR just decided to slightly buff like neutral cards until they started seeing play? And it looks like they're doing that. Um, some people might not like it, but honestly, the way I see it, why not, right? Why have... 200 neutral cards that see zero play in a deck when you could just buff them all and all of a sudden they're like consideration so the problem with neutrals being strong in the past so like rewind a year and a half right if you remember after homecoming came out cards like unicorns right these cards were auto included in every single deck because they were insanely strong they were better than all their uh, faction-specific counterparts. We had Witcher Trio included in every single deck because it was just so good, right? But we've gotten to the point where we've had enough expansions. We actually have synergy amongst factions uh, and power level of cards have gone up a good chunk that I think neutral cards being strong is fine. And on top of that, we also have the new tag, which is Devotion. Devotion being if you only play non-neutrals right so if you have no neutrals in your deck you get an extra ability or you get extra power so honestly i really hope they keep doing this i like it a lot it's pretty easy and we get to start like actually consider right because now you're like oh shit we're playing against a lot of sk i want banish i want to put in siphon wily into my deck to counter like crow mother or roach or snickers and i want to play the squirrel as well to counter sarah's and Right? All this consideration, but oh no, I lose my devotion in my deck, right? So I, I, I'm really happy about this. It adds, buffing neutral cards adds an extra element to uh, deck building, which I like. Is Sarah's three power now? Yeah, hopefully. Deck building complexity, yep. So re really happy about devotion. Irish Companions provision. Yeah, we saw this a little. We saw this up. No, wait, no, this is Companions, the other Iris. Uh, it's still shit, right? Yo, somebody, somebody, go call Swim. His favorite card got buffed. <laughs> um. Yeah. All right. Cool. Seven provision. DA still garbage. Um. Yeah. I mean. Okay. Cool. Next card, Lady of the Lake. Power change from six to seven. Okay. Here we go again. Uh, another neutral card that's not, I mean, it's pretty bad, but, I mean, I, there, there were some times where I considered playing this card, now that it's a 7 for 7, whew, okay, 7 for 7, I like that, uh, yeah, I mean, if you have a, it's like a, def it's a neutral defender for one unit, is that good? I mean, it's not better than a defender, but, it's not bad um yeah it's a seven for seven if you're playing elephant in northern realms which you actually might be because of the uh the change to elephant um yeah you get to protect shit i don't know seven for seven is really not bad play it with bork you can play it in a carapace deck you can play it with pop tart honestly like yeah it, it's really not bad you play it your opponent like even against aoe like lacerate you're going to immediately get two value off of it with protection. It, it, it's not that bad, okay? Is it going to be auto-included in every deck? Obviously not. But if you need some extra protections on some units, yeah, why not? It also protects against Rupture, right? Uh, rupture damages the unit by the power. Shield stops the first instance of damage. So if you play this on the board, they can never play Rupture. Whenever they play Rupture on a unit, you just go give it shield and that's it, right? Um, yeah. You can use it with Ansays, right? The extra shield, you get to double the value. Uh, it's good in a Pogner deck. Will Pogner deck be good? Probably not, but who gives a shit? The point is, it's a playable card now. Yeah, it, it's really not that bad. Um, also, at 7 strength, it's basically unkillable, right? 7, like, okay, Vincent can kill it. Okay, that's about it. How else do you kill this? <laughs> 7 strength with a shield? Like, you're gonna you're gonna heat wave a seven p card, dude. Your opponent's gonna like jump up and down and clap their hands if you heat wave a lady of the lake. 
Dude, yeah, I mean, removing this card is basically impossible unless you have a Vincent. Manticore Venom, provision change from 10 to 9. Yay. I mean, cool. This card sucks, but I guess it's better. 9 for 9. Whee! Sure. Uh, another round of swipe buffs to neutral cards that have decent effect. Cool. Uh, monsters! Alright, we're doing monsters. Immolith Gales, Nithro, Caranthir, Wild Hunt Rider, Wild Hunt, blah, blah, blah. All the Wild Hunt cards, primary category set to elf, secondary category set to Wild Hunt, Wild Hunt primary category set to beast, secondary category set to Wild Hunt. Okay, cool. Awesome. Doesn't matter. Um, I mean, yeah, it, whatever. Cool. It's. If they ever create a Squirtle card that says create an elf, I guess. Uh, Wrath, secondary cat. Okay, Nagafar. Right, so like all of these things are super relevant if this was like. Gels, tutor a wild hunt unit from your deck, right? Okay, all of a sudden all these things are relevant, but yeah, it's not the case, unfortunately. Um, wild hunt is now secondary. All right, cool. Uh, Crimson Curse provision. So this is big. Crimson Curse is a card that came out with the Crimson Curse expansion uh faction was named after this and this card is unplayable garbage yeah complete garbage but two years later a year and a half later it's playable uh provision change from nine to ten ability change to spawn blood moon on the enemy row for five turns and spawn two ekimaras in the opposite row so immediately when you play it you get four points really big whether having a body attached to it is really really good but on top of that Right. Well, no, that that's the big thing. And then Blood Moon keyword change at the start of owner's turn. Give random unit in this row bleeding two. Oh no, it's another. Yeah, uh, what's the Northern Realms card that's like bleed every time you boost it? This card, right? Nathaniel. If you've ever played Nathaniel, Nathaniel target locks on one like two strength unit. Seven bleeds on the. Yeah, it's terrible. But if the unit's already bleeding, damage it by two instead. So this right here. This tiny little detail right here, just, yeah, this card's very playable. Uh, if this wasn't here, it probably wouldn't be great. Uh, it, it might be playable, but it wouldn't be great. This this is huge. This is massive. Um, yeah, every now and then, if it's like two strength already and you bleed it and it bleeds again, you can overkill it, but it's going to happen less frequently than Nathaniel. Um, yeah, if your targets a veil card it won't it, it'll bleed it and then do nothing yo kruski thank you for the four months sir welcome back oriana likes it yeah dude this is really good for oriana uh i look forward to playing this in a no unit deck it's really good uh crimson curse i also believe is an alchemy card or sorry not alchemy organic which means you can tutor it which is really good yep uh one of the problems with the new ag echo card for monsters you can't tutor it well you can tutor this, and if you're playing a no-unit deck, you're probably playing these other cards as well. So, really, really good card. You can tutor it. Actually, you get the two plus the twos. You get six points uh, if you tutor it. So, yeah, really good card for no-unit monsters. No-unit monsters is receiving so much love this patch. Very happy. That was one of my favorite decks in the past. So, very, very happy about that. Yep. Uh, developer common. Quite difficult to make use of it. Yep, now it spawns Eki on play, making it faster. Blood Moon synergizes better with vampires. Yep, long lasting row effects. Cool. Fall good ability to change the death wish, summon all copies of this unit from your deck. Uh so yeah. They just make it all copies. Um yep. I they said on the developer is my music dead? Hold on, let me fix my music. I think it paused. I think they said that Foglet was like the last remaining card. That wasn't tutor all. Did they actually change volunteers? Nope. I, I like how they said that was the last one and they put Pigot and forgot. So I'm an eight copy. They haven't fixed this yet. I don't know. They debated me. I knew they were wrong, but I didn't say anything. Um Yep. Okay. Whatever. Debated! I'll probably tell them to fix that um so yeah uh we we it's but i don't think it really matters i mean it's summon all copies of this unit from your deck how do you get multiple copies of foglet i mean yeah operator i guess with like decoy but how, how else do you do it oh runestone sure yeah if you runestone into it and then nom it you get two copies okay that's true but if you do that in squatel you only get one copy 
Also, I don't think it works for Sentinels either, right? Oh, it is all copies. Okay. So, yeah, okay, right. They did change that when they reworked Bethany. Viable strategy? I don't know about viable strategy, but it is a strategy, I suppose. Um. So, yeah, I this doesn't really matter. Wild Hunt Riders, this is pretty big because Oberon... Where are you? Oberon. Here you are. Uh, you can create a Wild Hunt Rider, and, well, now you can spawn two Wild Hunt Riders from your deck. Makes it a 9 plus 6 point play, 15, and then on top of that you get double thinning. So it's like a, a balanced Sarah's. Wow. Poggers. Um, yeah, that's kind of cool. Bogland Wild Hunt. We're the last units! Don't lie. Lying is wrong. Don't lie. This isn't true. Don't lie. Gale's power change from 5 to 2 ability. Change to deploy melee. Discard a unit and boost off my power. Then draw a card. So they took Gales and Weaves and flip-flopped them. Yup. Alright, cool. Uh, Weaves, power change from 2 to 5. Yep, yeah, alright. So they just flipped it. Awesome. Fantastic. Uh, yep. Yeah, alright, cool. Skelly got champion, charge, primal, savagery, gutting, gutting, gutting slash, gutting. Trophy catch and stunning blow added raid category. Wow. Does nothing. Um, yeah, maybe they'll add a raid tutor in the future and then they're going to have to nerf all these cards because all these cards become broken if they add a raid tutor. Scal, blue boy, Lugos, added warrior. Cool, good for warrior deck. Uh, Uncrate warrior ability change to deploy given enemy unit bleeding three. If played from graveyard, damage an enemy unit by three instead. Uh, really? Okay. So, wow, I typed in warrior. The biggest tag in the game. Uh, damage enemy unit by one. So the problem with this card is it's garbage if you play it from hand. You had to discard it. Well, before discarding, it was pretty good because you would res it with Sarah's and Sarah's would come out and then they changed Sarah's and then this card went to shit and yeah, it all fell apart. So now they're finally buffing it. So that's kind of cool. Priscilla Jr. Thank you for the 19 month smile. Um, so yeah, this card was garbage. Four for four is unplayable. Now all of a sudden it's not garbage. Uh, you play it, you bleed an enemy for three and yeah. Once again, uh, normally bleed typically doesn't get value just because your opponent purifies it, but we're getting to a weird point with SK where you're not going to ever purify a bleed, right? There's a bleed four on this card as well, but you're not going to purify it because if you ever purify it, your opponent just kek Ws and insta-kills a unit. Um, yep. Why would you play this over Savage Bear? Uh, because you have a resurrect mechanic, right? This... Play four provision cost warrior from your graveyard, right? So you get damage an enemy unit by two, and then you get to play a six. So you get an eight point play. So there is a reason why it's better than Savage Bear. So there's synergy. Yep. Um, yeah, it's a playable card. Will it see play? Maybe in a warrior deck with uh, like a devotion deck with uh, war on clans, right? With this card, if you have devotion, always trigger death blow ability. You realize the ability. Well, actually, wait. It's only three damage, right? Yeah, three damage. So you can kill a five. That's not bad. It's pretty good. I mean, SK doesn't have a lot of cards that do five damage, right? They have, like, none, actually. Like, they have Giga, obviously. And then they have this card. Gutting, but it's contingent on your opponent having two Bloodthirst units. So, yeah. I mean, will Devotion SK be a thing? I have no idea. Maybe not. But if it does, or if it is, then yeah, this might be playable. Uh, ability 3... Oh, oh, well, yeah, yeah. I already talked about the Rupture. Okay. Uh, yep. Alright. Mask of Ouroboros. Ability to change the order draw card, then discard a card and spawn a crow in your melee row. This is huge. Um, this is garbage, except now it's not, because you get an extra two points. Is that relevant? Yeah, actually it is relevant in the Beast SK deck. Um, if you're playing Bran, you get a ping off of this, and then you get the two points, so you get three damage, so you, or not three damage, you get three effects of each, uh, value, and then you get the discard a card, obviously, so you can combine it with, like, a skirmisher and work where I get some more tempo, but the, the big thing is you get a crow, right? It's not just you get a random two, it's you get a crow. That's really good for Beast SK. Not to mention, we have a new mass purify card, which is going to see auto inclusion in Beast SK. Uh, that's just one extra point for your Flaminica. So, yeah, really nice uh, buff for Beast SK. 
and I, I suppose Bran if you want to play it. Um, so yeah, I like this a lot. Will it be better than the 5 for most SK decks? No, probably not. But yeah, for Beast SK, this is a nice change. Uh, gaining some points off here in a form of token using Mask. All right, cool. Northern Realms Engineering Solutions changed from 3 to 4. So once again, Stratagem's getting buffed. Uh, yeah, you get 4 instead of 3. Most Northern Realms deck never played this just because if you wanted to keep an engine alive, just take TA. If you wanted points, take Magic Lamp. There's no reason to ever take this. But... Uh, four with shield is pretty hard to kill. It plays into Vincent, I suppose. Um, the nice thing is it also plays around Geralt. Um, I know people uh, Keck W Geralt. No one plays that garbage card. Uh, we actually might see some Geralts starting next patch, and I'll explain why. Um, right now, if you TA an, an engine, you kind of just ignore it. Well, there's some new engines that we're getting. These... Right? If you leave these alone, they're going to get a lot of value, and then you get to get the value later on, uh, get even more value. Uh, and some of them, for example, like the Squayato one, you're really going to want to kill. Like, if your opponent plays a Smuggler, I can't, there it is, Dunka. If your opponent plays this, it's similar to a uh, Malain, uh, Smuggler. The difference is it has the word, Z not Zeal, it has Veil on it. Um, which means your opponent can't poison it. If you've ever played against Syndicate or Squatel, when you play an engine and you TA it, they just poison it immediately. You can't poison this. But if you TA it, it goes to 9, Geralt can pop it. So if this card starts seeing, not this card specifically, but if all of these start seeing play, um, not this one, but the other ones, then Geralt might actually see some play because otherwise losing coin against those decks is going to be pretty hard to catch up because your opponent's going to get an engine on the board that's pretty resilient. So, yep. Maybe Geralt sees some play. Uh, yeah, so if you play the four strength unit in Northern Realms and you boost it by four instead of five, it can't die to Geralt. So maybe this is a consideration to play around Geralt, which is kind of interesting. And of course, Vincent just one shots it because it has the words uh, veil on it. Engineering solution boost by four. So even if it's shield is, uh, yeah, okay, cool. Drummers! So we're getting a drummer change. Power change from 4 to 3. Provision change from 6 to 5. Armor change from 0 to 1. So, in terms of its effective HP, it's still the same, right? 4 to 3 minus 1, 0 to 1 plus 1. Uh, but it's 1 provision cheaper. So, in term, when you put it on the unit, it's, it's 1 fewer point. But in terms of its survivability, it goes up. It does get procced by Swears, which kind of sucks. And Amnesty. So, yeah. Um... Yeah. It probably, honestly, will not see any play because my guess is people are going to be playing Spy Nilfgaard. And if they're playing Devotion, you just slot in Amnesty and you're going to play Spheres anyways. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I Maybe in an all-engine deck you play it. With like Defender, the new card. It's it's better with the this card down here. Bellahoon, but yeah. I don't know. It it's it, it's a better card, but Nilf card just gets more value out of your cards, so <laughs> we'll see. If there's a lot of Nilf card play, it won't see any play. Um slight switch uh shift in stats makes him easier to include in deck without rising his powers to sacrificing his survivability. Yep. We're elephant, so this is a big change. Um, Varaxis, the Northern Realms evolving leader is leader. I keep saying a leader. Evolving card. It's garbage. It's the worst one. But, but there is hope. There is hope. The elephant has given it hope. War elephant ability. Uh, let's look at war elephant. You probably don't even know what it does. Uh, it's an eight for twelve order damage adjacent units by four, then boosts off by four for each unit damage. So if you have two shields next to it, you're looking at. 8 plus 4 plus 4. You're looking at 16 for 12. All right, that's kind of cool. Um, if you have armor, you can potentially utilize that. But most of the time, it didn't see play because the payoff just wasn't really there. Well, 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 well. Where'd it go? Damage adjacent units by 4, then boost by 4. Crew adjacent soldiers. Boost off by 8 instead. That's for each one, right? So this is plus 8, plus 8. So it's plus 16. Okay. Oh. 
Are you sure? Is it not? Read the commentary after. When crude war elephant will not trample his allies and simply boost. Oh, come on! I'll piss off. Really? I got you baited, dude. I thought this would replace this and it would be plus eight plus eight and it would be good. Oh, come on. CDPR. I was trying to help you out with Varaxis King. We're going to go plus 16 and then go again and get 32 value. And, he, and you just said no. Why? Why do you do this? You Pika. What am I on? No, it makes sense. Boost self by eight instead, instead of the fours. I like mine better. CDPR, change it. Mine's better. This is garbage. All right. I mean, it's it's obviously still playable. We have the new. It, it's definitely playable. Um, the problem is it's just too big, I, and nobody wants to play a sixteen in Northern Realms. Not to mention as order. Like, yeah, you can play the new Deco card or whatever that I can't pronounce. Spreads wrong information. Classic pumpkin. Yep. Uh, so yeah, if you play a little Deco, you can play it. Um, without having to worry about the order, but. The, the reason the easiest way to get crew is smoke them out okay i'm kind of sad i mean i guess you can play varaxis for another plus eight which is better than the other ones so yeah maybe it's okay but it's just too big like if you don't have last say your opponent just laughs at you and kills a 16. does veil protect once or multiple times i mean it's to infinity and beyond does Veil protect one in multiple? It's not like when you give a unit a negative status on Veil, it removes the Veil. When does NR have last say? Right, never, which means, yeah, I'm sad, dude. I was so excited to play plus 16, plus 16 elephant. Dude, I was going to have a 40 point elephant. And then CDPR said no. Feels bad, man. Squirtle Harmony, big, big nerf to, uh, to Squirtle. Harmony boosts off by one or the specified amount whenever you play a Squirtle unit on this row whose primary category is unique among all of your other units. So it's on this row. Um, yeah. So the reason why this is important, obviously, is normally if you've ever played against Harmony uh, and you get into round three and they, you, they haven't used water yet, they go water melee, water range, they play defender, whatever. But the point is they're on different rows. Um, yeah. Well, now, if they want the full value out of Harmony, they need to double stack the water. Uh, this is important because, well, if you're playing a card like Gigni, you're going to kill four instead of two, which is yeah, just a tiny bit better. Um, but m even more so, if you've ever played against Harmony and you're in round three, um, a lot of times they've maybe played Oak already in round one or two, so they don't stack the same row. They kind of, like... Play four units melee, four units range to play around last right surrender, any kind of row effect. So they can't really do that anymore if they want the harmony value. So they have to full row stack, which means cards like last right surrender, um, the syndicate, swipe card. All these cards are going to be getting better because if you're playing harmony, you have to row stack. Yep. Uh, also, technically, movement is a counter to harmony, which is kind of interesting. So, like, if they play water on melee and you move one of them to the ranged row, they can only get value out of one of them. So, actually, yeah, the movement counters harmony, which is pretty funny. It's interesting. If you use Mystic Echo on an Echo card, does it give you two Echo cards? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Spies will remove a ton of value from New Harmony. Yeah, if you row cap them, you have to start stacking on the Yeah, that's another thing. So um, if they row stack, right, and they cap, they don't keep getting Harmony value on other rows. So, like, another card to remember is uh, there are some Harmony cards that are row locked. So, for example, Hawk, right? It's not really row locked, but, like, depending on the situation, if you want the damage, which a lot of the times you do, you're always going to play Melee. Which means you have to play water melee, but if you're playing water melee, this treant, which is typically a proc for harmony, you're going to be playing it for poison on range, right? So you lose a value there. Um, 
piggy, you're typically playing back row as well because it's also ranged. So, like, yeah, you're going to have to start playing, like, ranged pretty often, I think. And then Hawk is going to be losing the Harmony. But I don't know. So, yeah, it, it's just a lot more thinking for Harmony, which is going to be interesting because most Harmony players are Papigas because the deck is so strong you don't actually have to be good at the deck well now now you actually have to think ahead so this is this is like a double nerf to scoyatel because it's obviously a nerf and then the average person playing harmony is just they're not gonna think ahead which is gonna hurt so it, it's a double nerf to harmony players which is pretty funny <laughs> Uh, unit category. Yeah, all right. Shield, uh, this change should sufficiently complicate getting value out of Harmony. Yep. Uh, row space is limited. Yep. I don't... So, okay, chat, do you think this kills Harmony? Harmony is probably the best deck in the game right now. Um, this is obviously a pretty big nerf. Does it kill Harmony? Does it just make it unplayable? I don't think so. Um, you're probably... I mean, you're definitely losing points. Do you just lose the game because of this? I don't think so. It kills long round harmony. Yeah, I agree with that. But if you've ever played against harmony, if they go three mid range rounds, like it's not the end of the world. So I don't think it kills it. I still think harmony will be a good deck. I definitely do not think it'll be the best deck in the game, uh, but I still think it's playable. Now, the other day I talked about, oh, you're never gonna wanna be playing like Water of Broccolon and like Ethne. Right? I mean, technically, if you play Ethne and then, like, Mystic Echo, Water of Broccolon, right? Boom! You get three engines on Ethne. You get two more engines on Water of Broccolon. You get to spawn a three-strength unit as well with the Symbiosis, right? Oh, that's insane. Five engines in one turn. Crazy. And I said, well, no, that's pretty shit because if you're playing a Harmony deck, you want to play lots of units to proc Harmony. If you're playing a Symbiosis deck, you want to play lots of spells, right? They're conflicting. But maybe you can half in on both the idea of being in one round you go all in harmony the other round you all in symbiosis or vice versa uh will that work out i don't know but yeah maybe you just go half in on both of them and that's your game plan you use one to win round one the other to win round three and they kind of synergize with each other symbiosis doesn't really mind if you're playing some spells um and some of the spells are for tutoring. So, yeah, I, I, I could potentially see, like, a new Harmony deck that's, like, Harmony Symbiosis, right? Maybe. That could be interesting. Uh, but, yeah, All Out Harmony is definitely getting nerfed. And I'm very happy about that. I don't like playing Harmony, and I don't like playing against it because it's OP, OP. Uh, Giant Enchantress ability change, too. So, it, current form is garbage. It's really bad. Uh, it's a 5-5 five, five every time... Er, you can give a unit vitality based on its armor. The problem is the only big card that has armor that's available to Squiatel is Living Armor, and it doesn't work because Living Armor, yeah, it doesn't work. Uh, so that's kind of shitty. Um, so this change is obviously very nice. Any IIers? Is it IIers or any NEers? I don't know. Zar, thank you for the 33 months. Any 33ers? Uh, I think we have one other 33. Uh, yep, so thank you for the 33, Zar. This is a big change. Given uh, allied unit three armor, this is really good for uh, Gord decks. Gord decks like playing Berserkers if they're playing Forge. They also like sometimes playing Monroe Zoltan, depending on the deck. Uh, but yeah, you can definitely utilize this three armor, which makes it an eight for five. That's that's good. Uh, deploy range given and or an ally unit vitality three. This is very good on the new Hammer Dryad. Uh, let me find it right here. Right, symbiosis at the end of your turn if this unit has vitality boost off by one. Cool. Uh, yeah, I think this card's really good. New Enchantress, good card, A for five. Uh, you can actually play both this and Berserker in the same deck. Uh, yep. This card's definitely going to see play next batch. Very good card. It has synergy with two different cards as well as is it eight provisions. The eight provision dwarf card. Is it eight? It might be seven. It might be nine. I don't actually remember. Yeah, Yarpin. Has synergy with Yarpin as well as Berserker. Yeah, it's a good card. It will see play. Very good change. I like it a lot. Yep. Uh, basically saying the ability is interesting, but it wasn't actually good. New effect will now guarantee your vitality regardless of armor. Yep. Very good. Saskia! 
I've been complaining about this card for litter like since it came out because it is absolute garbage, right? It's like a shitty popco on steroids. Shitty steroids. Uh, this card's been unplayable. Okay, now it is less unplayable. <laughs> Provisions change from 8 to 11. Ability change to deploy. Spawn an Elven Deadeye, Rowdy Dwarf, or Young Dryad in the row. Gain additional effects based on the unit you spawn. Elven Deadeye, so that's the 3 strength elf. Damage an enemy, a uh, random enemy unit by 2. Rowdy Dwarf, boost it by 3 and give it armor. Uh, Young Dryad, give it 3 vitality. So, the best one here in terms of raw output. This is 5. This is five and this is five so they're all five this one these two are better in the short term this is better in the long run. so they're all five uh the problem i believe the the body is still a five whoops a daisy uh so it's a 10 for 11 is 10 for 11 good not really but i'm assuming it's still gonna have the dragon tag so kind of useful for harmony um it's playable it's playable uh, if you're playing an elf deck, getting an extra dead eye is kind of useful. Uh, this can get extra points out on the Verno. It's a proactive play, which is pretty good. Uh, the Rowdy Dwarf, I'm kind of sad. This is, yeah, I, I wish, like, oh, it's another Rowdy Dwarf. This is really good for existing decks, but it boosts the Rowdy Dwarf. If it boosts the Saskia, okay, this is a decent option, but it, it boosts the Dwarf, which is really Papiga. Um, really bad for Zoltan, or sorry, Monroe, but whatever. Uh, and then the Young Dryad, this one we'll see a lot of play just because... Is it? Wait, is it spawn? It's spawn. Yeah, it's not spawn and play. If it was spawn and play, it'd be really good for Harmony because you could get Dragon and then one of these other tags. But it looks like it's just spawn. Uh, and then the Young Dryad, if you're playing a Symbiosis deck, it's actually pretty good just because it's another Symbiosis card. So it's a proactive Symbiosis card that goes wide on two bodies. So in a Symbiosis deck, this might actually see play. And once again, that uh, that Harmony Symbiosis split deck that I was just talking about, this card is good in it, right? Dragon is a hard tag to come by, so you're proccing the Harmony. You're getting the extra Symbiosis uh, potential value. So yeah, a Harmony Symbiosis deck might actually be a thing, and this card will fit nicely in it. So I like the change in that it's a potentially playable card. I dislike the fact that it's a 10 for 11, but... It's all right. It's not bad. Oh, actually, I just changed my mind. I like the card. I forgot about this card. So if you've ever played Squirtle, you've played Barnabas. Sometimes when you play Barnabas, you don't have all the tags. Well, this is literally get any tag you need. So you get into round three, you go, oh, I have an elf and a dwarf in my hand, but no dryad. Okay, Saskia, make a dryad. Oh, I have a dryad and a dwarf and no elf. Okay, Saskia, make an elf, right? So Saskia pairs very well with Barnabas as it literally just whatever you don't have, make it. Um, so yeah, it's actually not that bad in a mid-range deck. Once again, proactive, a little bit of flexibility. Maybe you need to kill an engine. Maybe you need that two extra damage. Um, maybe you have some spells in your hand and you want to play for symbiosis. Maybe you have a Barnabas in your hand and you need that extra tag. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a decent card. I, I don't think it's auto-include. I don't think the power level of this card is on par with, say, like, Elias, the Elias rework, but it's not bad. It's a playable card. I like it. It's a dragon. I will probably be playing this card. It's proactive. Yep. I like it. You used to have a fairly complicated effect. I don't think it was complicated. A card being absolute unplayable garbage is not very complicated. But sure, I mean, you, you can say complicated if you want. Um, yep. All right, cool. Aglaze power change from two to four. Awesome. Uh, current Aglaze is a meme. Now it got a little better. It's a four for 10. If you want a, this card to break even at 10 for 10, you have to boost it by six. Um, that is definitely a lot more manageable than eight. Six isn't too hard. Uh, if you're playing Brewer, you get the six immediately. Um, obviously there are other ways to buff it. We have all God. We have the new cuddlers. I, I, I like that name. We're just sticking with cuddlers until I learn how to pronounce this name, which is never so cuddlers. It is, uh, we have new cuddlers for this. Um, yep. The plus two, we have the new hand buff card, which is right here. So yeah, we have some, a, a couple of ways to buff Agalice. Eh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, will a hand buff deck work? Maybe. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to make one. I don't know if it'll actually work. We'll find out tomorrow, but I am pretty excited. Point floor on Aglice has been bumped up a bit. Yep. 
Cool. Uh, if you TA Aglice in round one, it almost breaks even. Right, you get to play Aglice as a nine for ten. If you counsel Aglice, you break even with TA. Granted, you're at what seven fourteen plus four. You're at eighteen point Aglice, so really thick Aglice. If they have tall removal, it's gonna suck, but it is what it is. Nilfgaard, Arbalist power change from four to three ability to change to so Arbalist obviously getting a rework because you know it. <laughs> This is now a neutral card, so they have to rework it. That's understandable. Uh, power change from four to three ability to change to deploy. Give bleeding through an enemy, bleeding three to an enemy unit. Conspiracy damage it by three. Conspiracy is if you're targeting a spying unit. Is this good? It's a six for four. Where is this card? This is like a seven for four. Uh. I don't know. It's just a shitty one of these. <laughs> so the other problem is... I mean, okay. So it's good because it's good in a shoot deck. In a shoot deck, it is better. Right? It is a 6 for 4. Is that good? Yeah, for Shoop Nilfgaard, that's plenty good enough. So this is a little bit of a buff for Shoop Nilfgaard. Um, are you going to play this in a Spy Nilfgaard deck? No. Nope. Not happening. Um, there are better cards to play. It's a 5 for 4? This is a 5 for 4? No, it's not. Damage an enemy unit by 2. Conspiracy boost health by 2. 5 plus 2 is 7. 7 for 4. Hello? Unless you keep devotion? Sure. So, yeah. Pretty underwhelming card, but it's playable, I guess. The, the big thing is, like, boost damage it by 3 instead. Um... Most spies that you're going to play are going to be one or two. The only other spy is Joaquim at four. But you're going to play Cut the Grass on Joaquim. So, yeah, I don't know. You would have to be playing one of these cards that gives spying. So, like this card or the Fergus down below. So, yeah, may maybe you're playing those cards. But, yeah, I, I don't think this card will see much play. Which is fine. Uh, Emissary, provision change for five to four ability. Change to disloyal, deploy, boost an allied unit by six. Um, this is a good and bad change. It's good because it's easier to put into your deck, right? If you're playing a spy Nilfgaard deck, you want to play spies. This has the word spying on it or disloyal, whatever. Um, so it's a buff to spy decks. It's a nerf to non-spying decks. You don't play Emissary in any deck, but as I've talked about this card a lot, Brothens is going to be auto-include. It just got a little worse. So if you create into Emissary, which is, I mean, if you want to do it, you can do it. It's 100%. Um, instead of this getting 11 for 11, it's now getting 10 for 11, which is okay. It's not terrible. But yeah, it's a little worse in non-spying decks. For a spying deck, this is obviously a buff. So yeah. Uh, I, I guess to bring the power level of this card down outside of spying decks is a good thing because 11 for 11 would assimilate guaranteed in every Nilkar deck is is broken um so yeah I, I i like the nerf brothens would be a little too good so I, I still think brothens is a very good card but the power level of him went down a tiny bit yep but a little bit of a nerf i'm gonna say he's dropped by one provision to better match the cost to his effect which is setting that five points in potential synergy so this is definitely a buff to uh spy nerf card very very good brothens has a simulate yeah i already counted that uh, Impera Enforcer. I didn't know if they were going to do this, but, uh, yeah. Power change from 3 to 4 ability to change the order damage enemy unit by 1 charge 1. So, current Enforcers is 2. This is 1. But, the big change, the reason why this is actually a buff, even though this is 1 instead of 2, is whenever an enemy unit gains spying, gain 1 charge. The current wording is whenever you play... Play is spying. The reason why play versus gain is massive is because uh, we have this card, which is give, right? It would be gaining. We have this card down here, which is give, not playing. Uh, and then we have the new Usurper card, which is not gain, but or it is gain. It's uh, spawn instead of play. So all of those three cards that I just mentioned, they would not proc old enforcers. But new enforcers do proc on it, which is really good. Obviously, still procs with Sedacious Aristocrats, so they're just they're putting it in line with Sedacious Aristocrats. Um, yep. 
So th this is a buff. Also, yeah, our enforcers were locked. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're row locked anymore. Yep. So I would say this is an overall buff to enforcers. Obviously, three to four means it's not, uh, you can't spheres it. And it's a little harder to kill. So that's important. But overall, it is definitely a buff because a lot of the spies that you're going to be making are going to be spawn or like uh, transform it. Not transform, but like giving spy. So it, it's a buff to enforcers. Uh, I like this change. Yep. What tag does it have? I'm assuming soldier human. Yeah. Um, so yep, buff to enforcer. Rain farm. Power change from 6 to 5. Provision change from 8 to 7. Ability change to deploy damage enemy unit by 2. Conspiracy increase the damage by 2. Um, okay. 6 to 5 provision change from 5 to 7. Okay, so it's a 7 for 7. Conspiracy increase damage by 2. Didn't Rainfarn had a persistent, like, effect, which is whenever you played a spying unit? Does this still have that? It seems like they removed it, which means it's shit. Once again, like, conspiracy, increase the damage, like, you're not going to be hitting fours. Nine for seven? Yeah, but it's not. Is it a nine for seven? Is it? No. It can be a nine for seven, but you have to play this in Fergus. Once again, if you're playing this in Fergus, you're going to want to be playing Cut the Grass, not Rain Farm. I don't know. This seems pretty shit. Like, yeah, it, it's it's a seven for seven. You're not going to be targeting four point spies. Like the only exception is if you're playing Devotion, you're playing Fergus and you hit three units. One of them you want to play Cut the Grass and the other one you want to rain farm. Like, okay, maybe. I don't know. I mean, you have to be playing Fergus and two of these if you're going to do this. Are you going to have room for that? I honestly think spy Nilfgaard decks are going to be really tight. I don't even know if Spy Nilfgaard decks are going to play Mage Torture. I know that sounds crazy, but a really good card in Spy Nilfgaard is Vigo. Uh, you're going to want to play the three Spies, and then you're going to want to be playing Enforcer and the Sedacious. The reason why that's really nice is you have a total of five Bronzes right there, right? Three Spies, two Engine Spies, or Spy Engines. The idea is when you play Vigo, you're guaranteed to hit a Spying at one strength, which is really good. You want to be hitting ones with Vigo, so... For that consistency, you're going to be wanting to run 3-2, which means this doesn't make the cut. Now, is that worth it? Is it worth not running Mage Torture? I don't know. Maybe maybe you just forego Vigo and you play Mage Torture anyways, and then maybe you can play Rainfarn. But uh, yeah, I mean, whatever. I would have preferred, honestly, whenever a unit gains spying, boost off by 2, and then just make it do like 2 damage. Like, if that was a card, oh yeah, Poggers, I'd play the shit out of that card. But in this current form, probably not going to be playing it. But maybe, we'll see. We'll see. Play Dame or Sedacious. What leader works best with Spies? Bess? I don't know. I would not be surprised if you played an Enslaved Spy Nilfgaard deck. Uh, you play Amnesty, you play Devotion, you all in with Spies and Yoink. So like, yeah right you know what's really good with uh amnesty enforcers right if your opponent plays a four point engine and you have an enforcer with a tick you ping it down to three and yoink it right so that's that's, that's pretty good actually so yeah i would not be surprised if amnesty spy nilf guard with enslave is not terrible is vigo a bad brothens i mean they do different things uh, developer comment, since Nilfgaard has a lot of cards, past load benefit from Disloyal, Rain Farm has changed to more actively taking advantage of playing those units. Yeah, but it doesn't take advantage! Ay, ay, ay. Like, it, uh, if it was like, look, damage an enemy unit by two, conspiracy, boost self by two. If that's what it did, okay, now we're talking. Now it's a good card. I, I, it's not gonna be four point spies you're hitting other than the Joaquim, you're gonna be cutting the grass with that, so, yeah, I, I don't really like this, to be honest, but whatever. Whatever, Stefan, ability to change to spawn and play a copy of the last deck that you play and give it doomed. Uh, for existing deck, this does absolutely nothing uh, other than, like, a sire bribery, but nobody did that. Uh, in which case, if you really want to do that, you just do it first. Uh, so this has zero impact on existing uh, Nilfgaard decks. 
The reason why this was changed is because of Cut the Grass. They don't want you playing Cut the Grass twice in one round and then going again and doing it two more times in round two or three. Um, which is understandable. This is fine. It's not really a nerf. I think it's absolutely fine. Uh, developers common tactics created by Stefan are now going to be banished after using it to stop taking advantage of echo mechanic. The ability did not change functionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. Valerian soldier changed from six to five. Finally, dude. Finally. It only took way too long. Uh, yay. We get a six for five. Poggers. Are you going to play this? If I can find the card. No, I can't find it because it's still six provisions. Uh, spawn a base copy of this. Pog. Six for five. Um... Maybe Swarm Nilf card. Maybe you play this with a seven provision card that I'm not gonna remember the name of. Nilf card. This card. Green D. Yay! Maybe 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 Soldier Nilf card's coming back. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, is it playable? I mean, it's six or five isn't great, but if you're playing a wide people deck with like Talisman, maybe it's good enough. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Hopefully. Um, Syndicate Congregation ability change. So this is this is I'm not a huge fan of this change. Um, congregation ability to change to spawn two firesworn zealots in an allied row if firesworn units are on the row spawn three instead so the the rationale here is it's kind of the card is awkward if you have coins and yes that is true if you have any amount of coins playing a four for four is really really bad um so in the upcoming Swarm Syndicate deck, this is a buff, I think, because you're going to be playing a shit ton of other Firesworn. Like, literally every card in the word, in the deck has the word Firesworn on it. So you're always going to be getting 6 for 6 on the... Or 6 for 4 on this in the Swarm Syndicate deck. But in a Gord Syndicate deck, this is really bad. This was a proactive play. Um, yeah. Can't do that anymore. So that kind of sucks. So it's a buff for fire sworn deck really big nerf for not really big but it is a nerf for gourd syndicate so it kind of sucks Rip. honestly i i like the whole idea of if they have coins only spawn two i honestly i wish they didn't change this but whatever it, if it means we are now playing swarm syndicate instead of gourd so be it i guess having no coins was intentionally an awkward condition coins carrying over between rounds i mean yeah but you just have to manage them i don't know i don't think this is a good enough excuse but whatever procession of pendants ability to change to deploy damage off by 10 reduce the damage by two for every fire sworn token so this is pretty big um for fire sworn deck nice nice buff for fire sworn uh swarm decks yep uh it's now counts all cards with both yeah 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 okay cool Sacred Flame provision change from the 10 to 9 ability to change to deploy spawn a fire Dell on both sides of this card order. Boost all units in this row by 1. What does it do now? I don't even know what this card does right now. It has an order now? Oh. Okay. Boost all units on the row by one. Isn't that a nerf? <laughs> I mean, I, I I guess it got buffed a little, right? But it's a nerf. I the the passive is better. Because now you have to play this and wait to get the value. It can only get value on one row. Whereas the other one, you played it, you get the value, and you keep getting the value. If they remove it, like, they changed it because of footmen? Which card is footmen? This card? No. This card? No. This card? No. Who's footmen? Foot... I don't know which card footman is. Oh, the token? The three? Hmm. Oh, okay. Ah. I don't like the change. I hate, I hate that. Whatever. It's still Zealot, not footman. I don't like the change.
whatever. It's a nerf. I don't know why they're nerfing it. Maybe it was too strong in Storm Syndicate, but it's one provision less. Yeah, but it's worse. You only get one row instead of both rows. It's it's really bad. It's not really bad. It's just it's just worse, right? Like you would play this range, you'd play Jermaine, you go plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. Like yeah, I don't know. It's definitely worse. I I don't like this change, but whatever. Uh, has been changed to an active ability instead of a passive one. It was often difficult to ration enough spawn cards. No, it wasn't. You played Jermaine and you broke even. No, it'll boost all cards in its row. I guess. Yeah, all right. I guess. Sure. I mean, with Congregate, it really wasn't that hard. Like, you play Jermaine, Kong, Kong, and that's it. Like, you're happy. I don't know. I This is a nerf, but whatever. Uh, conclude. Ask our senior community manager, Burza, throughout his Discord or on Twitter. If you have questions. If you do have questions, we have a great forum. All right, cool. Uh, overall, I like most of the changes. I don't like this change to Sacred Flame. I think this is wrong. Um, I don't like this change. I don't think it was necessary. I, I think people usually utilizing their coins and just making good decisions to utilize this was fine. Um, I, I don't think this change is correct, but whatever. Um, Stefan change I don't like. Sorry, not the Stefan change. Stefan change is fine. doesn't matter. I don't like the Rainfarn change. I think they could have done this better. I should It should be boost self by two. Um, Forcer change I like. Emissary change overall I like. Arbalist is fine. Aglice I like. Saskia I like. Dried Enchantress really, really good. Harmony I'm a fan of the nerf. War Elephant. I mean, it's better. I liked mine better, which was... Eight boosts instead of the four, so you go 16 16 with Varaxis, but whatever. Uh, maybe that's OP. Drummer, really bad against Nilf Guard. Engineering Solution, I like it. Mask of Ouroboros, I like. Champion Charge, doesn't. this is irrelevant. This isn't too relevant. It's a little better for Warrior deck. On Crate Warrior, I like this change a lot. It's going to be really good with uh, War of Clans. You get five removal value. Weaves, this literally doesn't really matter. Um, I would have wished this would be like. Tutor a wild hunt unit from your deck. If that's what this did, or yeah, or rather Gales. If Gales was tutor a wild hunt unit from your deck, I would be ecstatic. That would probably be my favorite change of this entire patch, but they didn't do that. So kind of unhappy about that. They they slap wild hunt on all these cards and it literally doesn't matter, but whatever. Uh, Foglet change doesn't matter. Wild hunt rider a little better for Oberon. Blood moon, really, really happy about this change. Uh, with Crimson Curse, it's actually a really good card. Now, Nagelfar, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. None of these matter. Like, you're not really utilizing the Wild Hunt tag unless you're playing Oberon for the plus one every time you play a Wild Hunt card. So, a little better for Oberon, but in general, it doesn't really matter. Uh, doesn't matter. This I really like. Playable card. Now, Irish Companion, still garbage. Siphon Wily, good card. Crystal Skull, doesn't matter. Xavier Lemon, if you want Banish, play Squirrel. Armorsmith, doesn't matter. Regis, unplayable. Morale, good nerf. Old gear, garbage. Thaw, doesn't matter. Shoop Hunter, nerf, nerf. Scout, garbage. Scepter of Storms, garbage. Avalok got nerfed by one. Iris is playable, but still probably not going to play. Clear Skies, garbage. Uh, Cataclysm, Ragnarok is actually pretty good now. Skellige Storm, uh, doesn't matter. Same change. Dragon Stream didn't change. Uh, all the weather got nerfed in terms of maximum value, but brought down to five provisions. So a little bit of a buff there. Will it see play? Maybe in weather monsters, like hard weather, no unit monsters. Uh, disloyal spying doesn't matter. Uh, reset is removed. They're not going to, it doesn't matter. Uh, yep, yeah, that's it. All right, there we go. Nice, nice, very quick backwards run through. Uh, just a nice little overcap if you want to do it all again. Yeah, you guys want to do the full card review or patch note change again? Um, yeah, so overall, I'm actually. I was pretty surprised when I found out that they were doing balance changes with the upcoming expansion in the past. When they do new expansions, they don't do balance patches just because CDPR typically <gasps> doesn't like to do balance changes along with adding a lot of new cards to the game just because if they change too much all at once, it can be overwhelming for them to know where they went wrong. But yeah, I'm really, really happy that they're doing this. A lot of playable cards now.